So who doesn't enjoy a good ghost story? Well, the Japanese certainly do enjoy their ghost stories, and that's actually kind of what this game is based around. Their Japanese ghost story is called Cadence, and that's pretty much what uh, Kuon is based around. But we will be learning about that shortly. For right now, we're going to go ahead and start a new game for Utsuki. This seal, the silk, how? Do you really think father is here, in this place? Yes, I'm sure of it. If we ask someone, I am sure we'll find out where he is. Wait. Come on, let's go. You need to be careful! <coughs> it's nothing serious. Don't worry about this. There is someone over there. Wait, I'll go see. Please, stay here until I get back. And with that mysterious song playing in the background, we've now find ourselves under control of Utsuki. And it kind of seems like there's somebody dancing around in the shadows there. We are never able to catch up with him. But we can find some healing items here. Also a horribly disfigured body. We'll be finding quite a few bodies over the course of the game in what is a rather large manor in Kyoto. But oh dear, there's any number of negative energy swirls and tempests all around. They'll cause us vertigo if we proceed to move around. Vertigo is a rather odd ailment of sorts in the game where well we become very disoriented, we're unable to use some of our attacks and we'll actually pretty much die from it. Thankfully though we have an easy means of healing ourselves via meditation. The one drawback of meditation is that, well, we're mobile and unable to defend ourselves. But I wonder what caused that pillar to fall over like that. Where 
heck did this come from? Yeah, to give a little bit more backstory about what's going on here, as you saw there in the opening text crawl, well, Utsuki and Korea's father, who is the priest of the house, has gone missing of sorts, and they've decided to go looking for them. And pretty much immediately, they've managed to become separated. Yeah, looks like we found another two items. These will actually not be here if that one shadowy figure we saw before didn't come running over this way. It's almost as if this dead figure on the floor was what we saw running around before. So whatever is over there in the distance was actually where we just were. Kind of glad we managed to miss whatever that is. But we do have a shiny object here. Wonder what that could be. Why, it's a handy dandy map and a helpful scroll to help us survive. Apparently the less noise we make, the less obvious we'll be. But in this case, the game forces us into our first bit of combat here. This is a Gaki, as was mentioned in that scroll. Normally, if you do not make enough, or you, you limit your noise by walking around and not having things fall over, you won't gain any attention. Thankfully, the Gaki, or I think Hungering Ghost, is actually pretty easy to take care of and doesn't cause us too much damage. Also, thankfully, they usually ha happen to drop a healing item, which is always very helpful. Also, since we got a map, we might as well have a quick look around at uh, our surroundings. We do have quite a bit of area to cover, and we will be covering all of it. For right now, though, I think we're going to be heading south across this little bridge. Well, this certainly isn't a safe spot for children, especially around dead bodies. But hey, that sounds like the song we heard when Korea managed to have her coughing fit and then go walking off. They're all dead. They're all dead. Ayako is the last one living. But is she still really alive? <laughs> Riddles definitely do not help me out in this situation. Let's go ahead and read this note attached to this barricaded door. It does give us kind of an idea of what we're going to be looking for for the uh, majority of this manor area. Apparently there's something about small shrine, wooden disc, and then spikes. 
We just happen to already find one of the wooden discs and spikes, but we do have to find another two. We have another Gaki here, apparently trying to get into a door. I guess I should explain a little bit about what combat we have available. It's actually fairly simplistic. We are given a ceremonial dagger as Utsuki, and we merely have a simple two-hit combo. Sadly, there's no real way to dodge in the game, and... Well, the game kind of becomes incredibly unfair if we happen to fight two enemies at once. But we will get better equipment later. Also, these seals are pretty much locked doors. We're going to have to find keys for those. The name Fujiwara is actually very historically important for this particular time period that the game takes place in. And that time period is actually called the uh, Heian period. We'll be finding out more about that in the thread itself. But we have found another book. Kind of goes over some of the grisly happenings that went on at the mansion. We will be coming across many, many dead bodies for this particular mansion. I'm assuming this was all the living staff, guards, things like that, that happened to be living here. And I wish I could say that Impaled on Bamboo was the worst thing that we'll be seeing, but we'll be seeing that soon enough. Oh, and did I mention cat scares abound in this game? Because they kind of do. But this is going to be our inevitable goal for this area, where we're going to have to find the three discs and three spikes. Obviously we can't actually use that right now, so we're just going to have to find some other path to go. So we have another shiny object. And this is actually our first weapon, our, I guess, first spell card of the game, Hibari. We'll be using those probably in the next update. I think for right now, it'd be best to head back into the, uh, the previous area, as this one is just pretty much a dead end. So many missing bodies.
Are you all right? Oh, yes, I think so. Thank you. I am Utsuki. I live in the shrine. Not far from here. I'm Sakuya. What are you doing here? I'm looking for my father. He's the elder priest of the shrine. My sister and I came from the mountain, but I lost her. It's not safe to be alone here. I wish I could help you find your sister, but... Here, take this. It will help you. Huh? Wait. It looks similar to the one father uses. Your father is the priest, correct? Here, take this. My father gave this to me. You may find it useful. Mm. Thank you. Please, be careful. I will. And thank you. Take care. So we get a few more spell cards from Sakuya, along with giving up the Sacred Cloth Earth. And we will be using these cards later, especially Saiga. Hopefully not mispronouncing these, I'm sure I am. But we're given a short tutorial here regarding the spell cards. First thing we want to do is go to Equipment. And we'll see that we can actually assign two different spell cards to both square and triangle. Hibari is fine. It does give us a ranged attack. And if we leave the other slot blank, we can continue to use our dagger, which is probably going to be the best thing for right now. Also, just to take a quick look at our inventory screen, it shows us all the items we have, such as healing items, and also that little vessel, the little paper boat you see. As you just saw Saki doing, you can actually use that at these mild triangular configuration of fires to, well, there are our save points, where we cleanse ourselves and allow ourselves to get rid of all the toxins in our body. Which is what we're going to be doing, and then we're going to be calling this an update. So hopefully you join me next time as we continue through the mansion, and hopefully find our sister. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.